BYU Sports Nation continues live from Studio B. We are in the Cougar Council Room now alongside Jerem Jordan. Let us Spencer counsel Lindsay. one with another. Let's counsel with yeah. the head coach of BYU Women's Volleyball, Heather Olmstead, who just got her new schedule. And What's up, Heather? Got Hello. some exciting things with the U21 squad, yes. USA, so we're going to address all that. But, great. Heather, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Always looking fresh. Got the kicks, Happy got the jacket. Here. Yes. You're in the you're in the middle of it. Even though you're not in season, you have like spring ball and yeah. schedule and U21. A lot going it's busy, on. Busy, yeah. Yeah. Recruiting always. Exciting, yeah. <laughs> You've had a few days to digest the Big 12 schedule. So, uh, just from kind of a 10,000 foot view, what do you, what do you think of the overall layout of year 2 of Big 12 play? Yeah, it's like another new conference, right? You've got yep. four new teams and it's exciting. I think the change, you just when you think you kind of know a little bit about what you're doing in the Big 12, it changes with these new, new teams coming in and joining and shake up how we're playing. And so it's kind of anything goes. And so that's how we're talking to our team. It's whatever we get, we're excited about. We're ready to go compete. We know a little bit more about the league, but again, it's changing. And I think it'll continue to change until things get settled whenever with all these conference shif shifting. And it's pretty exciting, though, just to play new teams and um, play some teams home in a way that we didn't get to play. Yeah. But we're, we're ready. We'll, we'll be ready. You're playing every team at least once. You're playing the new uh, kind of four corners teams twice. Yep. I would hope that Utah would be protected in the future. Is that, have they told you that, that you'll always play Utah twice? I just don't think, you know, with the way the conference is constantly changing. Mm. I think that's to be determined. So I, I think actually there could be more changes the following year. It sounds like we possibly want to shift towards a conference tournament. I think those are things that are oh, being thrown be out there. And so what, what yeah. does that look like? Because it's, there's no real equality in who's playing who, how many times. And so I think a way to find a, a true champion, such as other sports as football and basketball, is, hey, let's have a conference tournament at the end of the year. That won't be the case this year. But I do think that a lot of conferences are looking at going towards a conference tournament just to have that end of the year. Let's find a, a champion with, yeah. with how people are playing each other. Would that take out a couple conference games, perhaps? Or would you just start non-conference a little? Or I'm not sure. Sooner? You know, we have 15 teams. If you play everyone once, I'm not sure what that looks like. Uh, if you have some extra matches to play non-conference, I think all that those things are on the table. But this yeah. year, this is what we got. We're excited for, for what we have, who we're playing at home, who we're playing at way. I think it's exciting for the fans. Who's the one that doesn't have a team again? I can't remember. Oklahoma State does not have a women's volleyball. State, yeah. That's right. Yeah. BYU fans have a pretty good idea of what Utah volleyball is because yeah. you've maintained that rivalry through the years, but yeah. there's not as much information about Colorado, Arizona, and Arizona State. Um, if you look hard enough, you can find it. But what, if you could summarize. Arizona State from last year. Sure, sure. If you could summarize what those teams will bring to the conference, uh, what, what do you know about the Buffaloes and the Sun Devils and the Wildcats? Yeah, a lot of respect for the Pac-12 and what they've done. Uh, the history of volleyball in the Pac-12 is, is very deep. And so they, they bring in a lot of experience, great coaching staffs, great players. Um, you know, we know we see them out recruiting a ton. We know some of their players, and I think it's exciting for our players to be able to play some some closer institutions. And in the state of Utah, like you said, I think growing the sport and seeing what women's sports is, it, the excitement that is being built around multiple different sports, I think that's exciting for us to be able to have games in the state against teams in our conference, uh, and then to go close places where we recruit a lot and then get out outside of the, the West to, to play some of those other teams is really exciting for us. And there's pro leagues popping up. Salt yeah. Lake's getting one. Yeah. Obviously, you have Whitney Bauer and Kamali Hiapo, and Heather Knighting's going to play for the Salt Lake team, which is super exciting. Yeah. About this schedule, you are on the road Thanksgiving week again. Yeah. What, one time you'll get some home matches here, but yeah. you, last year it was, what, at West Virginia, yeah. TCU, and now it's uh, at Kansas, at Kansas State, the Wednesday, uh, Friday of Thanksgiving. Yeah, week. just opportunities for us to be together and go on the road, <laughs> and uh, it's exciting, and it's what we got. So we'll, we'll spend Thanksgiving together with hopefully some, some Cougar fans in, in Kansas, and we'll get them to come out to our games. And I think, yeah, at some point, hopefully that turns our favor and we're home, but uh, it's exciting just to know where we're going to be, what weeks, and, and start planning for that. Who, who's like the, hey, you got to plan Thanksgiving dinner uh, person on the staff? Yeah, our Haley does a great Haley, job. She's our Haley director of ops, yeah, yeah, and make sure we're taken care of. And, and, <laughs> and usually we have some people in the area that, that come out and support and help us find somewhere to go. And I think, yeah. you know, Kansas and Kansas State will be great hosts that week for us, so we're excited. Let's just get you whatever you need in that meal, okay, yes. Heather? Like if what is it a, that you need a in that specific meal? side dish, okay? Yeah, I love so turkey. Turkey, turkey person. Turkey, stuffing, yeah. and some pumpkin pie. Okay. Let's go. go. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. some pumpkin pie. We're good. The classic. Go and Kansas and Kansas Gravy, State. Let's go. Uh, all right, Heather, let's go ahead and kind of take another big picture look here at year one in the Big 12 yep. and where you feel like having gone through that 
has now prepared you and your staff and your team for year two? Yeah, I think just the experience we got in the travel and the arenas that we were in, they were jam-packed, they were, they were rocking. Uh, we've got to feel that. We know what to expect now when we go in these arenas. They're, they're not quiet, they're not empty. Mm. And again, the sport, volleyball is growing, it's exciting, it's on TV, people want to watch women's sports. And so I think we're ready for that uh, better and our fans understand what they're going to get when they come to the Smithfield House and watch teams come play and they, they supported us the whole year. So again, a new look with new teams and so I think that's just exciting to just to say, hey, we've got this year too, but it's also exciting, it's new, we've got new teams, and, and just keep the momentum going from there. You guys took a picture after every Big 12 win. Why was that important to you um, in year one? I thought that was interesting. Yeah, just the, the, the way BYU volleyball has been a, a winning tradition, I think, you know, it's not just about the winning, but it's about the history of being in the Big 12 and being year one, and that group, and how special they were to be the first group in the Big 12. We just wanted to, to remember those moments and have the players and, and the staff and the school remember those opportunities we had to, to play the first year in the Big 12. And when you get a win, anytime you get a win, it's just a big deal because winning's hard. And so we didn't want to take those for granted at all. What kind of opportunity is there with Texas out of the league now? Yeah. Um, obviously, you and Kansas were two and three there. A lot of good teams. Doesn't mean you automatically just go to the top, but. Um, it feels like, hey, there's an opportunity to win yeah. a regular season title. Yeah, I think you just don't, it's the unknowns with the new teams. Um, it's the unknowns with just a new conference. And so everyone was chasing Texas and they were a great, fantastic team and won the national championship. So for us, that was different than the conference, you know, we had been in where we had been, been, been blessed to win conference championships. We were now hunting that and trying to, to, to understand the expectations yeah. and the standards and the level that you needed to play at to win in the Big 12. And now Texas is gone. So what does that look like? I think the standards are still the same. They're very high. The expectations mm -hmm. are high. And we know what it takes to win at the highest level, no matter what team you're playing across the country. Yeah. So I think it's exciting to think there could be some movement. Um, but I think we're still chasing that excellence in the Big 12 and what that looks like and how we need to be consistent every day. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're in the middle of spring practices right now. And last week. Okay. We're at the end. You're yep. at the end. Last, last week. week. Okay. So coming to the end of this, what do you feel like is the strength of your team at this juncture? And maybe what's the biggest question mark you have about your squad moving forward? Yeah, I think just the, the opportunity that we had to play in the Big 12 and know where we need to be and be able to kind of mold those practices this year. It's always about serve and pass. It's always about offense, right? You want to be offense hitting for a high clip transition, first ball side out. And so that's how you're going to make your money is where's our offense? And so where can we score more in the middle? What pin can score more back row? I think that's a big deal any year you're going in uh, as a, as a new team and so I think that's things we focused on this this spring was where how can we produce more offense uh, serve and pass game needs to get better and 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 I think those are areas we definitely improved in you're the u21 national team coach which is super exciting you're yep. going to train in Anaheim compete in Toronto yep I like seeing Jalen Reyes on the staff which is fun um, what are you most excited about with that opportunity yeah very honored and blessed to be a part of USA and to be included in the umbrella of USA volleyball and the opportunity to learn to be in Anaheim with uh, right before the Olympics. I'm not sure if the team will be in their training. Some some arms of the teams of USA will be in the gym, but to be with a, a group of women and staff that are just excellent performers and want to be high performing people, I get to learn from them. And so I'm excited about taking you know what we can do from BYU with USA and what USA can give back to BYU. I think it's it's really exciting for me professionally, and um, we'll see how, how we fair in Canada you at this juncture of your career um, you've already accomplished so much Heather so where are you trying to get better as a head coach yeah absolutely that's a great question I think just trying to be consistent every day try to show up for your team we're chasing that national championship as a program I think the journey is is a big deal as far as getting our team to buy in that mm. um, you just never know you can't control the outcome there's a lot of good teams out there a lot of good players but let's let's be invested in this journey as far as how good can we be how good can this group be and it's not so much about winning championships big 12 championships or national championship is, is how good can we be mm. and me personally how can I learn and grow and have that growth mindset and know that there's going to be ups and downs, highs and lows, but if we're consistent, um, it, you know, we're gonna have success and that's what we're trying to teach our players. Great stuff, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Thanks.